Welcome to the Disruptor Network Podcast. So today on the Disruptors Network Podcast, we have Chris Gronkowski, who's CEO of IceShaker and also a former NFL football star. Chris's story is amazing. He's a serial entrepreneur and NFL was really just the start of his story. His whole family is in athletics and in fitness. His brother Rob plays for the Tampa Bay Bucks now. But what was most interesting about him is all the business knowledge I got from him on starting his business, selling it on Shark Tank, buying it back, and continuing to grow it. This podcast is amazing. You don't want to miss it. Please help me welcome Chris Gronkowski. Ignition. Lift off. Welcome back to the Disrupt this network podcast. I have an amazing guest today, uh, Chris Gronkowski, who is a former NFL football player, but I think calling him an NFL football player would minimize all the awesome stuff he's doing right now almost because it, you have an amazing story. You're the founder and CEO of Ice Shaker. You are a TikTok superstar at this point and a million other things. I have a million questions for you. So welcome to the show, Chris. Hey, thanks for having me, man. I, I like that intro. Uh, <laughs> TikTok superstar is definitely, um, I think, what I'm most known for right now. It's, you know, and I, I was planning on answering that question later, but I, just starting there, like, I really like connect to your TikTok because you answer questions and not only do you answer questions, but you're authentic in your answers. And I, I think that's what makes it so good. Yeah, it's, it's crazy, man. It, it just exploded. And, um, you know, what I realized with social media was if you bring value, um, you know, people are going to respect that and they're going to follow you and they're going to share it and they're going to tell people about you. And, I knew I had some pretty cool stories from the behind the scenes stuff of the NFL and just started sharing it and it just exploded, man. So it's, it's been a lot of fun and um, TikTok's real. I mean, people think it's for kids, but yeah. that, that app is powerful and it's, it's a huge, huge exposure play. And, and you're really probably feeling the, the, the force of it because you have product to sell. And I'm sure that it kind of like you just being bigger there just puts more highlight on your product, which is amazing. Yeah. And, and I get to work it in um, organically, kind of like you said, where, you know, people start just asking questions and I'm happy to answer them. And eventually people start asking, Hey, what do you do now? You know, what did you do after football? And it gives me an opportunity to organically work in the product. And it, and it, it does so much better when you do it that way. I know I did one post about um, the, the behind the scenes of shark tank or like how much uh, like Mark human still involved in the company. And uh, that drove like 30,000 views to my website, which was the same amount that, that, Shark Tank, the first day we aired, we drove about 35,000 views. So my TikTok post did pretty much the same volume as, as our airing on Shark Tank. And you almost think, you know, I'm sure when it happened with Shark Tank, you're like, how do we ever replicate this again? Like the first day, like how do we replicate this volume again? And you were able to do it through TikTok, which is amazing. Um, you know, so, you know, it's funny. So I was first introduced to you about a year ago. It's actually, I went and looked today, this morning, and it was, it was almost exactly a year ago. You, your whole family was on the Ed Milet podcast. Yep. And, it's one, of, and I listened to that podcast, but it was one of my favorite podcasts. And um, I was kind of amazed about the whole story, which I didn't know at that point. And, you know, your father is somebody who's been in fitness for 25 years plus, I think, at this point. And he also talked about in the podcast, this competitive environment he, he created in your house. How did that really get you w into the business mindset or set you up for success in life? And can you talk a little bit about that, your start there? Yeah, for sure. So my dad, man, 32 years, I think he's been in business now, um, you know, went from just starting it because he wanted fitness equipment for us, uh, for five boys that would actually last. And, um, you know, 32 years later, he's now the second largest distributor of fitness equipment in the U.S. Uh, but yeah, the, the one thing that he did, and, and I think my both parents did a, a really good job of this was, you know, they made us earn everything that we had. Um, you know, I think early on, it was because my parents had no money. Uh, I, I know my mom tells the story. I think my dad had like $52 in his bank account when they got married. Um, and, and then you have five kids. He works two jobs for six years to get his business off the ground. And I, I know they had to be struggling a little bit. Um, so I, I think that was, you know, just part of it at first. But as they got money, as we we're able to afford whatever we want, it was still all about, hey, if you want it, go get it. You know, if you want to go to college, great. But you're paying for it. If you want a new car, awesome. You know, go, go get a job, go work at work as an umpire over the summer. Uh, you know, go work for my dad. I worked for my dad at age 15, delivering treadmills off the trucks uh, to the, to the houses and, and building them all. And, you know, that's what it was all about. You know, you learn the value of a dollar and once you do, you respect it. And um, I, I think that's why we all were successful because we, we knew what hard work was and, and we knew what it took to be successful. 
Yeah, that's awesome. I, and you know, what I learned from the podcast is that all of you guys are successful in your own right. Um, and it was, you know, it, it's even like listening to it. Like I listened back to it today because I, I wanted to be fresh in my brain again. And, um, you know, you would think it would be hard to decipher from you guys because there's so many of you, but I really could hear your own individual voices through the podcast. And for your purposes, especially when I was back, listen back to it, I heard your, your name mentioned over and over again by your brothers as somebody who was kind of the connector to other people. Like you kind of seem to be the, the linchpin almost like where you're connecting everybody, the whole family to like the world of entrepreneurs outside of, of, of normalcy. I mean, do you, do you play that role for your brothers? I, I think we all do um, for each other. Uh, my oldest brother, Gordy, is um, he I, I would say he's the ultimate connector. Uh, he's. You know, he's still the party boy. He's the oldest, uh, still single, just doing it, doing it right, man. And um, having fun with it. But uh, we, we all work separately, but we all are about health and fitness. So there's a way to help connect each other with everyone that we're working with. And that's what we do. So uh, as a family, it's hard to work and it's challenging to work directly with your family. And we give each other space, but then we also help each other out at the same time. So um, that's kind of how we've done it, and, and we're always just connecting each other uh, with all of our contacts. It's good to hear that story, too, because, you know, sometimes you, you want families to be that way, and they're not necessarily always that way. So it's good to kind of hear that you guys have that relationship. Um, you know, so this is something I want to ask you about, because I kind of read conflicting things. I know you graduated from Arizona, but I, I heard like Harvard and Penn mixed in there. Did you take courses there, or is that something you did later on, or was that another brother? Because I, I couldn't figure it out uh, completely. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, shockingly, um, you know, I had really good grades. Uh, I actually only missed one question on the SAT for the math section. And uh, this is a great story. I was actually at a official visit for the University of Buffalo, partied till like 4 a.m. in the morning, had the SAT at 7 a.m. And I almost aced it for the math part. And then I just did absolutely awful for the for the English part, man. I, I was for sure. But um I was actually accepted into the University of Penn, uh, accepted into the Wharton Business School as well, which is uh, pretty, pretty challenging to do. Um, later on, I ended up not taking that. Uh, I actually committed to Penn. Uh, I got a last minute scholarship offer to play at the University of Maryland. Uh, so I took a full D1 scholarship instead. I, you know, I would have been accepted into the Wharton Business School, but I would have been paying $55,000 a year and, and leaving college with you know 200K in debt. So um Last minute offer came in. I jumped on it. I took it. So I went back later on um, through the NFL. They offer uh, educational programs for the players that you can take in the off season, where you can go to Harvard for a course and um, in entrepreneurship and and actually take it with some of their top professors. So I went back and did that uh, right. after the NFL. That's awesome. And you know, I when I heard that and I and I started listening to a lot of the stuff you, you talk about business wise you have a very high level business mind and, and the math definitely plays into the, some of the stuff I'm hearing because I've heard you talk about analytics um, from Facebook and Instagram and TikTok, and you're very plugged in to what the analytics are to your company. And so you obviously have a high math intellect. Has that really helped you grow it faster that you're so plugged into, you know, where the business is coming from and how you can attract new customers? Yeah. I mean, we pull a ton of, ton of volume from social media. Um, Facebook has been massive. I mean, I spent millions of dollars on Facebook ads. Uh, so it's it, people that say they don't work. Um, I'll tell you, I was one of them to start with. Uh, I spent my first hundred bucks on Facebook, said it was trash, said I wasn't going to waste money on, on paid advertising. Um, you know, I just kept seeing the same story over and over on Shark Tank. Like, hey, we spent 250K and uh, you know, sold millions of dollars uh, in one summer. So once I saw people being successful with it, I knew that you know, what I was doing was just wrong. You know, I didn't know what I was doing. So I really dug down deep. Um, I got into different Facebook groups, actually. I got into uh, different entrepreneurship groups as well. And I really started just asking questions, you know, what's working, how you doing it? And then just a, a ton, a ton of testing. So I actually ran our, our Facebook platform um, myself for, for over four years. We just recently brought on an agency and I uh, did it for verification that I wanted to see that I actually knew what I was doing. And We've been with the agency for about four months now, and I don't think they're beating my numbers. So I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm happy with what I was doing myself. So it's funny you say that because I've spent hundreds on fa hundreds of thousands of dollars on Facebook ads also. And I did it myself and I, and I worked through agencies and I found the same thing that, you know, it's just it's it's a big funnel. Like and you have to almost drive a lot in and kind of sift through it to get to what, what your, your customer base is. But 
an agency is not necessarily going to do it better than you can do it if you're really on top of it every single day, but it's good to have it off your plate, I'm sure, but they probably won't do it as well as you did it. Yeah. No one knows your business like you do. And no one cares as much as you do as well. And no one cares about the money either that you're spending on. (laughs) So um, if you have the time to do it for sure. And now with, with Facebook and how smart it is, it's actually a lot more hands off than it used to be. I mean, it used to be, I used to have like 50 different ad sets set up and I was targeting all these small groups and it's not really like that as much now. I mean, the learnings are so good that you can really consolidate and not have to change them up as much. Yeah, and, and they allow you less information than they used to be too. So they kind of zero you in on it, yeah, so, which yeah, is so, bad, I'm sure. <laughs> so you really can't even you know, really dissect it as much as you used to. So yeah. um, kind of just have to let them do their thing. The thing right? um, backtrack a little bit. So you created an ice, shock, ice shaker, obviously, after you got out of, you know, you, you played pro football in the NFL for a bunch of years and you got out and you created an ice shaker. Kind of what, um, I know that I know your your, your kind of motivation behind it. You just wanted a cold drink for the whole entire day, which is awesome because it's a product you use, right? And by the way, I'm I'm not just a fan. I'm a user of your product. I love your products. So I have three. Yeah, there you go. That's, and I look, that's a newer one that I saw you had. It, but um, so what what made you like? How hard was the process of creating a product, especially something that was um, proprietary to you that had never been done before, kind of this way? Like how how what was that process like? Yeah, man. So. I thought it would be easy, right? <laughs> oh, really, it, it started as a side hustle, something I was passionate about. I wanted to find a way to get back into the fitness industry. Um, I was working five years with my wife, super successful business. I was actually making more money with her business than I was playing in the NFL. And um, five years in, I never told anyone what I did. I never used social. Like People would ask me what I was doing. I was kind of like, hey, I just kind of doing my own thing because uh, it was it was a personalized gift. Uh, company I saw that. Yeah. wedding gifts and like you know father's day mother's day kind of things and it just wasn't like that manly you know like it wasn't <laughs> who I was so uh, even though it was super successful and we we're we we're crushing with it it just at the end of the day I wanted to kind of chase my passion so I uh, started ice shaker as a side hustle and thought it would be easy because man it's a super simple idea basically take the technology that was already out there and put a shaker top on it yeah. that, that was pretty much it and um you know, it, it was probably about 20 prototypes later. It, it's hard to get the bottles to seal and get everything perfect. And um, I, my first run, I finally get it and get super excited. It feels like it took forever to get there and um, order 10,000 bottles. And half of those first 10,000, the second you picked them up and, and flipped them over, this pop top actually, for whatever reason, for, for the first time ever, wasn't made correctly on half of them. And um, they all leaked, but you couldn't tell which. So to start the business, I had to take 10,000 lids off and replace them, uh, from the manufacturer. And it it was just, it was crazy bad, but, um, yeah, definitely nothing's ever as easy as it seems. Uh, I was young and and I used to look at people and be like, man, that guy can do it. I can do it. Right. And and you never really see how much work goes into it. And people all the time say like, man, it must've been nice. You had a following all that already. And, um, I didn't really, I I probably had about 30,000 followers on like Twitter at that time. And, I remember I put a post out and <laughs> got no engagement. <laughs> I mean, I hadn't posted in months. I'd never engaged with anyone. So um, my following was trash because I didn't, I didn't give them back any love. So, yeah. uh, you know, that was kind of a huge eye opener for me. And it, it really came, became real once I got those products in my hands and realized that this isn't going to sell unless I put some work in. And that's when I started going to uh, go into shows on the weekends and also um, I, I had to figure out a way to get ranked on the top page of, of Amazon. You know, I went to Amazon first because I knew it was the biggest marketplace in, in the U S and if I couldn't sell there, it wasn't going to sell anywhere. So that was one of the first steps I did was, you know, try to rank it for the top terms on, on Amazon. So, and you know, I'm, I'm going to transition to Shark Tank. Was, was, were you ranked high on Amazon before you went to Shark Tank? Was a company already kind of ranked on, the, on, on a page where it was visible at that point? Yeah, for sure. So we were, by that time I was able to get it up to like the top three for shaker bottle, which was um, the biggest search term that, that there would be for this type of product. So, you know, so on the shark tank. So first of all, your shark tank episode, I think to this day is one of the highest rated episodes ever, which is, <laughs> which is un- amazing. Like, you know, the show's been running forever. It's, it's on for 10 years, probably at least. And you guys are one of the highest ranking episodes, which is, is crazy. And second of all, 
I think you guys playing flip cup on Shark Tank was genius. I think it was the most genius idea I've ever seen because from my point of view, and you can tell me if it's true or not, you made you really took them completely out of their comfort zone. Like they were uncomfortable coming to play. And I think that you kind of disarmed them a little bit. I think so too. I think it was genius, man, because all those hard questions, which um, you know, I, I was prepared for and I was waiting for, but they never really got thrown at me. Uh, there were some, I mean, you only see a very, very small part of the questions that were asked to me, but um, you know, like the Mr. Wonderful question where like, Hey, what's stopping me from making the Mr. Wonderful shaker? Uh, you know, I was waiting for that, those, those hard questions. Right. And they never came. And I, and I think that was the reason why, because we just got them, you know, out of their comfort zone. And then I think they were just kind of comfortable with us after that. And it was kind of like chilling in a room with your friends hanging out. And, um, you know, that's when the offer started coming. So, yeah, I think that was big. I was told that that will never happen again. Um, <laughs> he does not want to promote drinking. So I, you know, I had to make sure that I told this whole story about, hey, this was our favorite game that we played after games, get rehydrated with water. <laughs> uh, I, I snuck it in there. Um, it, it was a one and done. And I'm, I'm pumped that I did it because they kept saying, like, let's do like a push up competition or something like that. I'm like, you know, it's just not that entertaining to watch someone do 100 push ups in a row against, You're right. some, you know, they could probably do 20. So, you know, there's no value there. Like, we, we're obviously going to beat them in every athletic competition. So, what can we do that kind of makes sense? <laughs> uh, you know, that's going to be fun and entertaining to watch. No, you know what the whole thing is, too? When you first come out, you have all this energy, and it's almost like being a stand up comedian. Like, you're talking to a crowd that's not necessarily reacting at all. Like, they, like you kind of saying all the stuff, like, and, and they're like straight face. So, it's like, you don't know if it's good, going well or it's not going well. So, like, when you got them up, I think it was a clip they showed Barbara Corcoran, and she was just like, are we really doing Like, she was annoyed. Like, are we really doing this? But they're like, they got to the table, and it was like, it was all good, like, two minutes later. So, I, I thought of it. I was like, it was really genius because you totally disarmed them. Like, you took away the, like, where you were on the defensive and you kind of went on the offensive. Yeah, man. Definitely, definitely worked out well. Um, to get offers from all five sharks was massive for me at that time. I was six months into the business at that point. And um, just a huge proof of concept, man. Everyone watching was like, I need this now. All five sharks offered. And then you're able to also use that proof and just, you know, throw Facebook ads with it as well. And, and that was, that was massive. That's what we needed to, to really propel us uh, to that next level. And you know, I took that investment and I, and I took all the money from the show and we went from one bottle um, you know, to over a hundred different variations um, within like the next year and a half. That's so. And were you able to leverage the relationships they had to get you kind of some big, bigger partnerships or, or bigger placements of more visibility? Yeah, for sure. So early on, um, right away, we got into GNC, which was big. Um, I know just recently we got on QVC uh, through a connection with Mark Cuban as well. Yeah. Uh, that was nice. Um, really, what was great too was just having, I guess, mentors from other companies that had already went through it. So um, Cuban would connect me with other companies that, that wanted to help out uh, through that process of, hey, you know, you're about to go live, you're about to air, like, this is what we made mistakes with, this is what you should probably do to prepare. Uh, so that stuff was massive, man. And, and still to this day, the networking between these companies is awesome. Um, I, I call up and talk to a lot of the new companies coming in now at this point, and I help them because, you know, I, I remember what it was like. And it was rough, man. And you had, you had no clue what to expect. And I, yeah. I go tell them now, like, Hey, do this, do this, do this, build your email list, get SMS up immediately. Uh, you know, have, have product ready to go on, on both platforms. A lot of people are going to run to Amazon immediately. So uh, if you want to sell, you know, get them there, but you know, make sure you have a way to drive them back to your website so you can build your audience. And um, there's just, there's just so much. It's such a giant opportunity. And these companies are so young. They just have no idea. And I know, I know that was actually a pivotal moment for you where you had, when you appeared on Shark Tank, that um, you actually had them buy all your old, it all, they bought all your old stock off of Amazon and then they came to your site, which the stuff was probably more expensive because it was new. And then they, they, they bought there. So it was like, you, it actually ended up being really a pivotal move that you did that. Yeah, that was big, man, because I just didn't, I didn't even know who my audience was. Um, and we did, we had all this old stock and we just came out with this new, new, new bottle that was a lot better. <laughs> And uh, it was just like the ultimate way to just blow through old stock and, and get it out and, and just not have to worry about it anymore. But uh, man, yeah, for, for me at that time too, what was huge was if you collected those email addresses and you got those sales at that point, you were allowed to put them back into Facebook 
and get all the data back from it. So you could pull the demographics from those emails and then look at it. And I realized right then uh, that our audience wasn't a guy like me uh, for the most part that was buying. You know, they were the, the, the end user, you know, a guy like me was using the product for sure, but the people buying it were, were usually the wives um, or the grandmas that, that were buying it for their kids or husbands, the grandkids. And, you know, right away, I realized like, wow, we, we need to change up our targeting. And, yeah, and, uh, I'm focused so, on the one thing. Yeah, it's crazy. Because it, it was just straight meathead videos for guys like me. And I'm <laughs> hey, working that bell. And then I started thinking about it. I'm like, well, I don't buy anything. I mean, my wife buys everything for me. Yeah. So why am I trying to target a guy like me who doesn't really shop? It's crazy. It, it, it changed the direction. What was, um, when, when they bought into the company at, at the Shark Tank, how difficult was the that purchase, the term sheets and all that kind of stuff? Was, was that part of it crazy? Yeah, that part sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's like, I, I think only about 50% of deals actually closed because the term sheets, I mean, they're super beneficial to the sharks and they need right. to be, they need to protect themselves, right? Um, I'm sure they've seen everything, but yeah, if, if you're a well-established company and you get some crazy terms thrown at you, um, yeah, you're probably not going to take it. Uh, I was super early on. Um, for, it, it was almost like, Hey, if you want it, you're going to agree to these terms. If not, then you got, you're walking away, uh, you know, from the table. So, uh, yeah, you bring in a lawyer, you argue the terms, you do everything you can and they don't change. Um, uh, <laughs> At, at and that budging, point. right? There's no negotiating that at that point. Yeah. I mean, the thing with me was in, you know, we're six months in, so it's super risky, right? Um, we also have the family name where, you know, people think we're going to party and it could get a little crazy. So <laughs> I don't think that helped either. So I think they really had to protect themselves and they put a bunch of terms in it that um, protected them. And, you know, at, at any point they could enforce it, they really wanted to, where they can get out of the contract if they really want to, but um, I don't think they ever will as long as things are going well. So Got it. yeah, they're yeah, there to protect, I, I, really. I'm sure that was a, a big learning experience for you on a go forward. Even when you look at term sheets now, I'm sure it, it changed your kind of perception of what they are. So it was probably great for a bunch of reasons. Um, yeah. Um, so the other thing, so the other point I want to mention, uh, you know, as far as Ice Shaker goes, because I, I, you know, so I listened to a podcast with your brother with a Rod with Rob and a Rod and um uh, a Rod talked about how you 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 brokered the deal to buy your have your brother buy your shares back from him, and then you kind of brokered the deal to get him in into one of A Rod's companies, which is Fit Plan, which I thought was genius all the way around. Can you talk a little bit about that as much as you can? <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Um, yeah, Rob was retiring at that time, and he wanted to be in the business world, uh, so he came to me and was like, "Hey, man." Um, you know, how can I be a part of Ice Shaker? And I'm like, well, man, I've, I've already given up 15%. I do this all day, every day, nonstop, 24 seven. Like I'm not, I'm not giving up any more, more of my equity in this, in this company. So, um, you know, he, he reached out to Alex, made this cool deal where, um, you know, we could really help each other out. And, um, you know, Alex agreed to it. I mean, he's a family man. He knows what it's like. And He's like, yeah, for sure. I'd, I'd love to see you guys work together again. And, um, you know, in, in return, he had to do the podcast and he had to uh, become a part of, of the Fit Plan app as well. And that was something that fit right up our alley. So it worked out well. Yeah, it's great. I mean, and you got your brother into your company and you didn't have to give up equity. So you, you, you negotiated good for everybody in that situation. <laughs> yeah. And Alex made, I mean, he, he did really well on, on the sale too. So, I mean, I think it was only like two years in and I don't know. I think it was, he got like 5X on his money. So it wasn't a bad deal. Where, where is, I, you know, the last time I, I, I kind of checked and somebody said the company was, was around 15 million in sales, I think. Is that right? Are you past there at this point or am I off on the number? Uh, so, I mean, we went from, in that first year, we were at about 80,000 in sales when we got on the show. Um, we, in the next 12 months, shot up to about 3 million in over that next 12 months. And We've grown uh, probably 30 to 40% every year. Um, we, we projected to grow another 40 to 50% this year. Uh, we're actually beating that number for the first quarter and then having supply chain issues right now. Um, product's hard to get. We keep selling out. We're actually, because we're beating those numbers and the supply is not coming um, as fast, we're just, we're struggling to, to keep product on the stuff. On the, on the, on the, yeah, that was the question I have for you. How did COVID affect you kind of business-wise? Oh uh, man, COVID, it, it actually, it helped us. Um, and it was for a couple of different reasons. It wasn't necessarily because of the, 
the product. I, I think it really helped us grow as a company. Uh, it made me step back and take a lot of responsibilities off my plate and put new structure in. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't come in every day. I couldn't do everything I was doing before. Um, and, and so with that, it, it really gave me a lot of time to think. And the one thing we were missing was, you know, kind of this team atmosphere. You know, I played in the NFL. I played all these years in sports and the business really wasn't set up like that. You know, it, it was pretty much me trying to do everything and, and no one else was really a part of any of the big decisions. So um, I looked back at it and I was like, man, I'm going to set this up like my football team. You know, uh, I'm the coach. These are my assistant coaches. These are my players. Everyone has a role. Everyone knows what they're doing. Everyone knows how to win. And let's set it up like that. So um, really made me step back and, and reorganize everything and get everyone on the same page as well and just build a really cool culture here. And then uh, the product itself, it, it did well. Uh, people realized that um, you know they now needed a bottle everywhere they went. I, you know, water fountains for a while were completely out of, out of commission, man. So uh, you have a bottle i think you still do uh for the most part you have to bring a bottle to, to, to work or to school um and then just mm -hmm. online just exploded and we were good online you know we don't have a, a huge retail presence like some of the big brands do but we have a great online presence and we're really good with online uh, marketing and ads so uh, that helped us out we ended up having a great year um and that continued right into the, the first quarter of this year as well awesome yeah you know i i look at this time especially over the last year it's kind of like almost like the golden era of, of straight from business to consumer at this point now, because, you know, you didn't have the stores open and you didn't. And so as businesses, if you had a product like yours, you didn't necessarily need a distributor at that point or retail in the middle of you, you could sell direct to consumer through social or whatever. I, I got to imagine that helped. Yeah, for sure. It, it did. And um, my wife's business is the same way as well. And, um, you know, even though she was in the wedding industry, which just got completely destroyed, uh, we were freaking out for a little bit. Uh, what we realized was, everyone was buying gifts, um, you know, online and, and the holidays became bigger because people couldn't see each other in person. So a, a holiday like Father's Day or Mother's Day was just insane. I mean, the volume coming through was, was numbers that were, you know, beating every other holiday, uh, by far, probably double than, than the previous year. So, awesome. um, yeah, even stuff where you thought was going to kind of fail, um, you know, if you were direct to consumer, you were going to probably do pretty well. That's awesome, man. That's a, it's a, it's a good part of the story. So the, the last, well, well, first of all, I want to ask you, what are you working on now? It, what's next? Uh, you know, what, what are you working on? Uh, I'm sure you're not the kind of person that sits still. So like, what else are you working on outside of Ice Shaker um, that people need to know about? Man, we got a lot of cool things going. Um, we have the YouTube channel, which has been pretty cool. Um, I saw yeah. I, <laughs> It was yeah. a big week for you guys too, because you fought, I know you fought Jake Paul a couple, uh, Logan Paul a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, so we, we boxed Logan Paul with zero experience and just got <laughs> this. Uh, but hey, it was it was great for views. I didn't know it was coming. Rob set us up pretty good for that one. <laughs> That's crazy. So um, that, you guys, it's good content for sure. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny, man. Uh, we're going to have to get them back for that one. That's for sure. So we'll see. We'll see what we could think of, but it'll just be a great story. If we can, uh, if we can get them back with that. But uh, that's one thing we're doing. Um, always involved kind of with, um, you know, my, my, my dad's business as well with Gronk Fitness and G&G &G Fitness Equipment, uh, the charity where we have the Gronk Nation Youth Foundation as well. And then, um, you know, our two businesses here, myself, uh, my wife's and mine that I'm, I'm balancing as well. And, just new stuff coming out with Ice Shaker. We're all about living a healthy, active lifestyle. So um, our next thing coming, I actually got the final sample yesterday, is uh, more of like a lunchbox cooler. Uh, so you can bring bring your lunch with you. Everyone who uses their bottles, they, you know, they're 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 making their meal prepping and they're bringing their meals. Meal prep, yeah. So we'll have a cool bag. Uh, keep your your meals cold. It actually, has two layers on it, so you can put your put your meals on the bottom and then the snacks, stuff like that, or whatever you want on the top layer. And then, uh, you know, we'll hold two ice shakers as well. So that's coming. Jugs are coming, uh, request by Rob to get a one gallon jug and a half gallon jug, uh, for that, that Tampa heat, man. So we got those coming as well. And, um, just, it's always, always trying to figure out the new and best thing. Um, so with ice shaker, we'll just continue to grow and, and just kind of maneuver into the different areas. That's awesome. The lunchbox thing I'm excited for, you know, I meal prep and to be totally honest with you, the, the, your product really, so I have two cars now. I, I, I had one at the time that have like a little refrigerator in the middle, but the problem with that is when the car is off, the car, everything gets hot. So it, 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 like the whole purpose of buying it didn't work. Like, so your product would have saved me a lot of money if I just took your product and didn't have the refrigerator in the car. So 
it's been really useful for me. And I have, I have three of them, you know, one I use in the morning, one I take with me. And then I have like the, the slimmer one. That's like the coffee kind of one that I use. So I kind of have three of them at this point that, that, that are useful for me. I love um, it, man. Yeah. I, I'm a user of the product. So it's awesome. So the last thing I have for you is, um, you know, you really grew up in a family of alphas and you, 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 you out, your house is kind of set up that way. And like Tim Grover, I love that book calls and cleaners. And like, you kind of all guys had that mentality. Um, how do you feel like that shaped you as a leader now, you know, a leader of a large company now, like how did that shape you as a leader and, 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 and kind of force you to, 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 to be a certain way? Man, um, that's a tough one. Cause I didn't, I didn't think I was the greatest, um, leader when I first started this. And I say that because when you start a business and you're so competitive, I tried to do everything myself. I wasn't very good at delegating. Um, and I wasn't very good at making people feel like they were part of it because I, I wouldn't give them that responsibility that I would and I pull it back and they're, you know, it was frustrating um, for the people that were trying to work for me. So uh, I, I don't, I think, you know, kind of being alphas and so competitive um, actually hurt me at first. And I really had to step back and say, you know, why isn't this working? You know, how do I fix this? How do I build that culture? How do I build that team? And once I did that, now I look at it and I'm like, man, it, it all makes sense now. And now it helps. Now it helps for me to see that. And, um, you know, all that growing up together and, uh, you know, being the captains of teams that, you know, I, I'm, I'm now making it work and now it's helping me instead of hurting me. So uh, that's, that's, that was, man, that was the biggest transition for me. And, and I keep telling people that all the time. And it was something my dad preached to me as well. And, it's just when you're so competitive, it's hard for you to listen. Yeah, you know, I, I never, back thought, to, I never thought of it that way because when you're so competitive, it's almost like you're so you're thinking about yourself all the time, and it's always like it's solo. And and that's probably why some great players don't make great coaches because they don't you can't understand the concept of like I have to make everybody feel like they're involved. So that that's a a really amazing perspective that I didn't think about before. Like it, it really makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, it, it was a struggle, man, for sure. Um, uh, and I see a lot of people struggle with it as well. And uh, yeah. I'm glad I figured it out. And it, I'm almost, uh, it was almost a blessing to have, have COVID hit us at that time and, and really make me step back and, and yeah, look at the yeah, That's great. Too. I mean, listen, I, I'm, I'm amazed and, and, and I'm, and I'm as excited to have this conversation and it's been great. And uh, I'm just impressed by everything you're doing. And, you know, more than anything, Disruptors Network is really about, focus on people who are really putting the work in substance. And I think you represent all of that. Um, and, you know, and when I did research on you, I was, you know, I was super impressed at just kind of what you've accomplished so far. So I'm excited to see the rest of it. Um, where, where can people get in touch with you? Like, where's the, is TikTok the best now at this point? Or is it Instagram? Like, where should people interact with you? I, I would say um, Instagram, probably. Um, I don't really check DMs on TikTok. I, I don't really know. How, I think there are DMs, but I don't. Need, I don't know either. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't. I don't look at them if there is. Um, so yeah, or just hit me up, Chris at iShaker dot com. Um, always answering emails. Email is probably the best way uh, to actually get in contact with me. I actually check it nonstop every day. So uh, hit me up there. But yeah, follow me at um, at Chris Gronkowski Instagram, Twitter. TikTok, um, all of them, man. I think I'm on every platform at this point. <laughs> I'm even posting on Pinterest now at this point, man. So <laughs> that's, that's awesome, dude. I, I really appreciate you coming on, and thanks so much. And 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 we'll connect again soon. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. All right, thanks, dude. Take it Take easy. Care. All right. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Thanks for tuning into our episode with Chris Gronkowski. I hope you guys learn as much as we did, especially how to have a very successful Shark Tank episode. Next week, we have Terrence C. Murphy, who's actually the host of the Real Estate Entrepreneur Podcast. So make sure that you guys tune in next Wednesday, along with watching all the rest of our episodes on all streaming platforms. See you guys there.